Uh, you know, so on yesterday's show, remember our role playing John Hallman? We uh, oh, were channeling. Just hearing those words. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. just, why are, you guys are filthy. Yeah, I'm not filthy. I'm sorry. All Donnie. I'm sorry. Donnie's I mean, filthy. Seriously, we're, what? Immediately, it Nothing. goes to the toilet. Right. Yeah. Uh, John Hallman was channeling how Republicans might dodge questions about Donald Trump's calls to rip up the U.S. Constitution. Yes. And guess what? Yes. They were taking notes. Look. Mm. Your guy is talking about terminating the Constitution. Can you denounce it? They can't? He, he's a private citizen. Uh, uh, he says a lot of things. Really? That's what, they're, that's what they're going to you say. Support, can you support him as a presidential candidate? He's not going to be a presidential candidate. Are he's you still going to be the nominee? We he's have announced. Lot. It's not clear uh, who's going to run. Uh, I, but I think it's certainly uh, irresponsible. He's running. Running. he's running. I mean, I guess he is until he isn't. There's going to be a political process. We'll see what the voters have to say. When the voters speak, I'll make that determination later. The voters will determine who's going to be the nominee for the Republican Party, who will be the president. I'll leave that to the voters to decide. But look, guys, uh, I think it's disqualifying for Joe Biden and his press team to go out and say from the podium that here's a list of people that they want banned from social media. Do you think it's a disqualifying comment? I think the voters get to decide those things. All right, well done, Heilman. It's not that hard. They, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, They've been teeing really, it up they, for years. I've been yeah, paying yeah. attention to these people for six years. It's just, you know, it was the most obvious thing in the world. This is what they were going to do. And notice the reporters there. didn't sound like me going, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> January 6th? Oh, I know. Um, so, yeah, the incredulousness was definitely not carried over. But you, yes, that's where they go. They kind of don't say his name. Don't say his name. But they do sort of renounce sort of well they put out a state put out statements that that if you tippy, tippy, tippy yes toes. there's a lot of tippy toeing on the eggshells and they put out statements that are basically things that they could have i mean implausible deniability with trump himself they would say oh uh donald mr president um i i, I was not referring to you at all i was asked about the constitution right, and so i right. said the, you know ted cruz's is the best one in there which is the constitution is enduring and it will endure for millennia you know if trump don't get mad ted cruz why did you say that thing about i didn't say anything about you donald i didn't say a word look oh, your, word is God, nowhere, so your name painful. is nowhere near my statement you know, yeah, i was just speaking about the glories of the constitution it's pathetic it is pathetic donnie deutsch you have been in the branding business uh for decades and i uh You've probably helped a lot of Republican clients, correct? The not branding? as Republicans, but Republican, no, yes, yes, CEOs. Correct. Correct. So it's not just, okay, so I just want to put that out there. So if you were advising the Republicans right now on their brand, would there be value in saying, I reject Donald Trump as a candidate. I cannot stand for a candidate who says anything about terminating the U.S. Constitution. This is the line I'm going to draw. My answer is no to this. You know, John talked in the last hour. From a branding point of view, yes. I mean, by the way, can you imagine Ron DeSantis, if he ever oh, came out, if he ever said, hey, look, guys, it's a new moment in time. And by the way, I'm not passing judgment on Donald Trump one way or the other, but we can't say things like this. I mean, and and maybe it's time for all, all of us to move on. I think it would be and we can't. I think for him it would be brilliant because it, I just think there's a way to do it. Having said that, though, we can talk ad nauseum. And John brought it up in the last hours. These people want to keep their jobs, and they're going to get primary, and they're going to lose. It's like there's no more analysis other than that. It's no. not about bravery. It's not about what's right and wrong for the brand. It's individuals. It's 250 in Congress, whatever they. Are and 48 in the Senate, whatever those numbers are, that want to keep their jobs. It's just there's no other arithmetic to look at it. There's no other analysis to do it. They understand that the base is what votes in a in a primary, primary. and then Donald Trump will basically unleash his base and say, "Don't vote for that guy." That's it. There's no more analysis. We we could go on for days and weeks and months and what, but it's pathetic. It's 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 nauseating. And if anybody ever did step forward, if somebody who had the muscle. Like, and I'm sure there's discussions behind closed doors of a DeSantis mm -hmm. to just say, draw the line, go, guys, follow me. Mm -hmm. It's time. Because you do get a sense it's time. Isn't it's, it? It, it, it's but, just, I mean, you, you do on. get a sense. But this, is the, this actually points to a serious thing, a difference between the parties, right? Because right now the Republican Party has this problem is that they are captive to this base that is very extreme. So Donald Trump, or, or anybody who pays uh, homage to Donald Trump, can't win a national election. You can't, Donald Trump cannot 
His support nationally keeps going down. He could never win a majority of the vote in any circumstance. Donald Trump is not able to, I would say at this point, Donald Trump can't even run the table through the narrow uh, path of the Electoral College. He's that toxic. He's also the front runner for the Republican nomination because in a smaller electorate driven just by Republicans, that base has extra outsized power. The difference between the parties is that people say, well, the, le the, the Democratic Party also has its left wing. And you say, they're well, not controlling yes, it. they're not. Then, then, this is the, then this is the difference, right? You can't win a Republican nomination without appealing to Donald Trump's base voters. You can be Joe Biden and say, as he did in 2020, you know, I'm, I'm not going to compete for Bernie Sanders on the with Bernie Sanders on the left. I'm not going to compete with Elizabeth Warren on the left. He won the Democratic nomination without embracing Medicare for all, without embracing mm -hmm. the Green New Deal, without doing <laughs> without doing any of the things that the left wanted him to do. And it's just that the, the left has a big voice in the Democratic Party, but it doesn't. It's not a barrier to a more central, a more centrist politician winning the nomination, as Biden proved. In the Republican Party, the base has made the, it impossible to get over their hurdle and then be a nationally competitive candidate. And that's the problem the Republicans face. That's what Trump and Trumpism have done to the party. They've created a circumstance in which it's almost impossible to nominate someone who clears that bar and is then electable on a national basis. Of course. And Eddie, this is not a branding question. This is a practical yes. question. This is a man who was president, wants to be president again, saying explicitly that I want to get rid of parts of the Constitution because they're cumbersome to the things I want to achieve. Uh, he said, if you're just joining us, he denied, <laughs> this is the definition, by the way, of gaslighting, a term that maybe <laughs> is overused but he said this a couple of days ago word of the year Willie. massive worthy or massive fraud there's no massive fraud we've detailed that allows for the termination of all rules regulations and articles even those found in the constitution he wrote that on his social media site and then yesterday said i never said the thing i wrote that if you scroll up a couple posts i said right there and that mm -hmm. is still up there but it's not some theoretical question he showed us by trying to achieve a, a coup of the last election. This is what he wants. This is the kind of president he wants to be. Right, so it's it's not only a practical question, I keep using this word, it's an existential question. I mean, the, the, the worry about the concern over our democracy. This figure still sits at the center of, of destabilizing the very foundations of the republic. Does he, uh, like, I, I, here's my question, and, and it's, it, it does feel like a moment in time. And is it time for us we have to report the news, obviously, so it's not like, let's not talk about Donald Trump. But is it time for us to do it in a less consequential way? Like, oh, look at what Trump did. It's just he's really, at this point, he feels so defend at this point. Mm -hmm. And we, we allow him to still have his fangs. But whereas yeah. I, I do. Well, except, I don't, I, except I, for the fact that that is the case, that if you were a Republican running for the United States Senate yeah. in 2022, yes, in these yes, midterms, yes, yes. You, had to, you had to say you wouldn't, you, and had, this to be, is the, you had to be an election denier to, get to, to become no, the nominee no, in a lot of cases. So that's a lot of power what, still. What, what,